Being a kid was great. Not only did we not have to worry about ridiculous things like paying rent and not being late for work, but we also got to spend all of our free time doing things we loved. Going out, riding bikes with our mates, playing rounders after school. For our American viewers, it's like bad baseball. Or in my case, playing video games. It did have its drawbacks, however. A child's income sources are generally limited to paper rounds and whatever our nans slipped us when our parents weren't looking. Also, age ratings meant that we couldn't always stroll into our local game shop and make our preferred purchase. Stacking yourselves two children high in a long trench coat never worked either. Trust us, we've tried. For this list, we've taken a look back at the games topping many a Christmas and birthday wish list, which unfortunately we never did successfully convince our parents to purchase. Maybe they were too pricey, too violent, or just too darn defensive, but we knew they'd be the greatest games ever if only we were allowed to have them. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 great video games our parents refused to buy for us. Number 10. Doom. What's that? Violence, demons, and heavy metal in my good Christian household? I think not, young man. An entry here that will most certainly resonate with our older viewers if we're talking the original, or youngest if the 2016 soft reboot is more your bag, our number 10 spot goes to Doom. The 1993 edition of Doom is set in the distant future of 2022, and players must step into the shoes of silent protagonist Doom Guy to try to stop the evil pouring out of the moon bases of Mars. Many an enjoyable hour can be spent kicking ass and taking no names because we don't have time for admin right now, we've got demonic entities to slay. One of the titles that helped to define the first-person shooter genre, Doom isn't particularly child-friendly, what with all of the aforementioned graphic violence, satanic imagery, and nasty creatures lurking about the place. It was for those reasons that most of us never got our hands on a copy as youngsters, regardless of our best efforts to convince our parents otherwise. Number 9. South Park's RPGs for many of us, South Park was a mainstay of our childhoods. If we'd been a good little boy or girl, our parents would let us stay up on the weekends and we might have just caught an episode or two. The jokes mostly went over our heads, but getting to hear swearing on the telly was the highlight of our little lives. Jump forwards a few years and they've turned it into a pair of surprisingly faithful games. Children begged their parents for copies and they universally said no probably due to that very faithfulness. The Stick of Truth's reputation most definitely precedes it, and the last time we tried to summarise just what made it so controversial, it got our video demonetized. Sorry, YouTube overlords, it won't happen again. Look, here's a nice fluffy kitten, we're good boys, promise. Just be safe in the knowledge that South Park, The Stick of Truth, and its sequel, The Fractured Butthole, are naughty, naughty games that are only intended for the most depraved among us, and they are most certainly not for your sweet, innocent eyes. Number 8. Silent Hill series. When we were younger, we all used to think that we were super cool and tough and that nothing we saw in movies or video games could ever scare us. I'm eight years old, Mum. I think I can handle myself. Cut to me sobbing in the middle of the night unable to sleep because a particularly macabre episode of Jonathan Creek has freaked me out. You'd have probably gotten wind of the Silent Hill games from that one slightly edgy friend whose parents seemed to buy them everything they ever wanted, age appropriateness be damned. Despite the franchise being over 20 years old, many of the Silent Hill games are still considered to be some of the scariest video games ever made, with Silent Hill 2 in particular celebrated as a masterpiece of horror gaming. Heck, even as fully grown adults with jobs and actual real-world problems, they still give us the heebie-jeebies. For that reason, it's not difficult to see why many a parent refused to buy it for their little ones. Come on, Timmy, how's about we go and see the Silent Hill movie instead? The only thing scary about that is how bad it is. Number 7. Rock Band when it was released in 2007 or 2008 if you didn't live in North America, Rock Band was something of an innovation. If, like me, you were forced into music lessons and subsequently gave up, it was an opportunity to pretend you were Kurt Cobain for the afternoon, you know, with Courtney Love scowling from just off stage. The rhythm game came boxed with several controllers disguised as various musical instruments. Players strummed, bashed, and sung along to a wide variety of hard-rocking hits from decades past following colourful on-screen prompts to strike the right notes at the right time. Parents had two main issues with Rock Band. It was expensive, 
coming in at around $170, which at the time was more than three times as expensive as your average AAA title, and it was noisy. Not that we're experts in the subject, but we imagine that if you're about to drop the best part of 200 big ones on a gift for your offspring, the least you'd hope for is that it would keep them quiet. We can't say we're surprised that this one didn't materialize for a good number of us. Number 6. Grand Theft Auto Series now, some parents might have been duped into buying this for their kiddos under the false belief that it was just another driving game, but sadly, ours were a bit savvier. Until we could convincingly pass for 18 at our local game shop, although Tiny Peter does still struggle, we were left Grand Theft Auto Lus. It isn't difficult to see why mums and dads aren't rushing out to buy the latest GTA for their little ones, what with all of the controversy that Rockstar seems to court at every turn. Whether it's the endless violence, their often archaic attitudes towards women, or that hot coffee debacle. They never seem to be out of the press for one reason or another. It's clear, though, that no press is bad press, because Grand Theft Auto, despite all of the trouble it seems to constantly be in, is among the best-selling series of all time. None of those purchases were made by your mum, though, so you're going to have to content yourself with Animal Crossing. Perhaps you could pop a cap in Tom Nook. Fudge around and find out, Tommy. Number 5. Resident Evil series. Many of us have fond childhood memories of shredding zombies to bits with our friends at the local arcade. Oh, and the fun of emptying our pockets of the money we wish we had now. Then, as home consoles achieved true domination, we searched for ways to scratch that undead itch in the comfort of our own homes. We rented Resident Evil, played it for six minutes, had unholy nightmares for months, and were grounded by our mums for exposing ourselves to such a violent and terrifying game. The Resident Evil series has been around nearly as long as we have. Have, dropping new titles on a more or less annual basis since the original was released in 1996, consistently delighting players with engaging storytelling, interesting characters, and more genetically modified monsters than you can shake a stick at. Unfortunately, trying to explain to your parents that Resident Evil 4 is a triumph in narrative structure goes over about as well as a fart in a crowded lift, and no amount of debate is going to make her forget just how many times she had to wash all that bedding. Number 4. Call of Duty series. In the eyes of many parents, it's one thing to allow your sprogs to play games in which they dispatch hordes of demons, monsters, or zombies. It's quite another thing to let them participate in a realistic war zone. With a release in nearly every holiday season since 2003, Call of Duty has become a frequent flyer on the wish lists of gamers the world over, with campaigns set across several real wars, including World War II, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. Of course, the realistic violence and controversy courted over the years, particularly by levels such as No Russian, in which the player is expected to take part in a terrorist attack in a Russian airport, has meant that parents are less than thrilled at the thought of their kids playing the games. Oh well, I'm sure that DVD documentary on World War II you got for Christmas instead will be just as good. Number 3. Mortal Kombat Series do I really have to explain why your parents refused to buy Mortal Kombat for you? Were the several spleens littering the screen just a bit too subtle? Alrighty then, here goes. The Mortal Kombat series has been gracing our consoles for almost 30 years, and it seems to have spent every single one of those years in hot water with one group of concerned citizens or another. If you're unfamiliar with the premise, though I'd be surprised at this point if anyone doesn't know what a round of Mortal Kombat entails, it is an arcade-style fighting game. At a glance, you might think that the games are nothing more than a bit of button-mashing fun, but controversy has followed Mortal Kombat around like a less irritating version of Scrappy-Doo. The issue that many have taken with the series, aside from all of the scantily clad women, is the amount of graphic violence and gore. Players are rewarded for successfully executing, no pun intended, fatalities, which almost always involve some degree of dismemberment. From non-elective spine removal to good old bifurcation, Mortal Kombat has it all, and that is why you don't have a cat in hell's chance of getting it for your birthday, young Johnny. Number 2. Dance Mat Games If I asked you for a list of the most dangerous games in the world, your mind is likely to come up with Manhunt or Postal. However, when it comes to the threat of actual physical harm, aside from a well-aimed Wiimote, we'll get to that in a second, there are few video game peripherals that have caused quite as many injuries as the Dance Mat. Originally released as a slightly less accident-inducing arcade game, titles like Dance Dance Revolution made their way onto the humble home console in the early 2000s. Aside from the fact that stomping on them to hit the musical cues made a tremendous amount of noise that our parents did not take kindly to, uncoordinated gamers frequently found themselves tripping over their two left feet as they attempted to keep up with the fast pace of the soundtrack. 
Not only this, but the mats themselves were a tripping hazard, and many a family member has found themselves spread-eagled on the living room floor after you failed to put yours away, despite being told several times, Ben! Throw into the mix a cost that was higher than most other games of the time, and you've got yourself a good list of reasons Santa didn't leave this one under your tree. Unless he did. In which case, I assume at least one of your siblings still has that dance mat concussion. And that's not okay. Number one. Mario Kart series. If you're scratching your head at this one, my dudes, I get it, because what could be more wholesome than a bunch of friendly Nintendo characters whizzing around a colourful racetrack? Seeing its first release back in 1992 with Super Mario Kart for the SNES, with a sequel for pretty much every Nintendo platform since, the Mario Kart series has long delighted competitive players the world over with its simple premise. It's also been wheeled out at many a gathering to end friendships left, right and centre. And that, dear viewer, is the problem. If you've ever been enjoying a comfortable win only to have it snatched away from you by a blue shell thrown by one of your sneaky siblings, you will know the pure, unbridled rage that courses through your body, which almost always ends in the controllers being thrown or some sort of familial brawl. Not to mention the tantrum your little brother has when he loses his fifth race in a row, prompting your parents to order you to let him win. It's all too much for a parent to deal with, frankly, and that's why many of them won't even bother allowing this one through the door. Which makes sense, but that's not how he's going to learn, Mum. And that's our list. What games did your parents refuse to buy for you? Have you ever forgiven them? Let's all commiserate in the comments down below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.